Hey guys, it's May May, and check out this cool little box type card I have for you today. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. This card comes from you guys asking for many pop-up cubes. So today I have done that for you. Let me show you what happens. If you take this little card and you pull them apart, you get these little miniature cubes that pop out. So you guys saw that I did the regular size cubes, but these are the minis and they live inside this little spot in the card and you can pull them out. And today I'm going to show you how to make it. Now you'll notice there's like some black marker on here. This is like my, my template piece. So don't worry about that. Yours won't look like that, but this is the project we are making today. And I hope you enjoy it. So this box starts a lot like our other box, except this size cardstock is four and a half by three and three fourths. And you're going to put it in your scoreboard on the four and a half side. And you want to score it at one and a half and at three inches. Okay. Then we're going to turn it to the three and three quarter side. And this time we're going to score it at one and a half, one and three fourths, two and three and a half. Much smaller little guy. And I want to show you this. I did one with the markers so you could see where all we are doing our score marks. You can kind of see it on that one, but I was afraid it would kind of blow out with the camera. Now we need to do some trimming. And look, I don't even need my big scissors because this guy's smaller. All right, so we're going to start down here on the inside of this score mark at the bottom. And I want you to cut all the way up till you get into the second cross mark. Okay, so the second spot there, let me cut this away and it'll make sense. So we're going to leave one little piece there to be a tab. So you see that? Now I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. Let me show you from here. I'm going to be cutting, maybe I can do it this way because it's not quite as big. So I'm going to cut straight up on this side to that second cross mark. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and cut that piece away. So we are leaving, I'll get that out of the way, we're leaving that so far. Okay, now I'm going to make some tabs. So I'm going to cut all the way up to where that um, crosses, and then I'm going to angle cut to the inside. Now, I did not find with this smaller size that I had to do as much trimming um, after I got going as I did here. So these two cuts may be all you have to do. I'm going to flip this one so I can get to it. These two little angle cuts may be enough, but if you need to trim more later, you can. And I'm doing these a little deeper than I did probably on my first box. All right, so that's what you're looking for so far up there, okay? Now down here, we're going to make a couple little angles just to give us some space when we're putting this guy together. And now we need to make another cut. Now you can totally do this with your trimmer. I need to cut from here, from this little score mark to that little score mark. And I'm just going to use my, trim, uh, my shears to do that because it's not that big of a spot and I can pretty much do it with my shears, no problem. But if you want to lay this on your trimmer and do that, you certainly can. That is what we're looking for, okay? Um, obviously, without the black lines because you don't want that in your project. Well, you might. It depends on how you want your project to look. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut up to that second line. I could technically go all the way up. Look, I could cut all the way up. Just cut across at the second line if I want to save myself a step. And I do this kind of thing a lot. I kind of cut out that extra little um, cut that I went back and did because I did it right there in the beginning. Let's do it on this side. So this time I'm going to cut all the way up to where they meet. But when I cut it off, I'm only going to cut at the second line, just like so. And then I'll go ahead and get that little angle cut like that. And I'm going to flip it over and get this little angle cut like so. Get all these little pieces out of the way. And then just the bottom angles. Then we're ready to assemble. Well, almost. There's there's two more nicks that I always forget to make. Okay, so in the middle here where you have these three lines, this is going to be a mountain valley fold, okay? So I'm going to fold up, back, like that, and then up. That is going to make my little mountain valley in the middle there. See that? And that needs some pretty good angle cuts. Now, not super deep because this is a much thinner piece than we used on our big one. So you just want to do something about like that. Can you see how that's an angle? So that our rubber band can live in there. Okay, I'm going to do it on the other one too so you can see that. So mountain valley fold. Up, back, and up. I'll do all the creasing of these in a few minutes. With them being smaller, it's not quite as difficult to do with your hands. And then again, some pretty deep 
angle cut, but not too deep. All right, let's move this out of the way and I'll show you what we got. So these are our two pieces. I am gonna go ahead and do my creasing now. So all of the score lines need to be folded and creased. So I'm just gonna run through and do all of that. And we do have another little kind of fancy fold we need to do. It's not hard, I'll show you in just a second. We got those middle ones done already. Let's get this little guy on the end folded and creased. Okay, now up here, what I want you to do is these little tabs, I want you to turn backwards like that and see how little is in our way here as opposed to our big guy. I'm just gonna trim that off just to get it out of the way. All right, and then what I want you to do with that tab folded backwards, you see I've got it folded backwards. I want you to take this point and oops, it's not backwards, it's forwards. I'm sorry, I told you wrong. Turn it forwards. I do that every time. With this point, I want you to meet that point. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna kind of press that middle and bring that point over like so. We're just making an angled fold on the side and then crease that down. Let's do it again. So let's bring this one forward. I don't know why I keep thinking it's backwards. And look, I don't even have to trim it. That one's clean already. And then we're just going to, look, I can hold it in my hand and do this part because it's so much smaller than the big one we did. And then just crease that down, just like that. So you got your little wings there, okay? So let's do the same thing over here. So do all my folds, all my scores, all right? Then over here, we're gonna take this, I always forget, forward. Oh, I forgot to do my angle cut on here. Let's do that. Okay, so now we're gonna take those little bottom flaps and fold them forward. And then we're gonna bring that point to the top and just line up that edge, increase that down. And see, I have a little bit hanging over the edge here. Let me get to where I can show you. See that little bit? I'm gonna trim that off. You'll see that when you're making these, that's where that little um, angle piece is. And it does matter. You do wanna to try to get that out of your way. All right, let's bring this little guy up and then bring it forward and nestle it down, just like so. And there's a little tiny bit hanging off here. I'm gonna trim it here too, because it will get in my way later. Right there. All right, well, let's put these guys together. So now that you have two made, you want them to lay just like this. You have your wings facing out, okay? You're gonna take your glue, and on this one, there's a flap at the bottom. You wanna put glue on the back of that flap, and then you wanna line that up and lay that flap down onto the other little piece and make it one piece. Now, we probably could have done this out of one piece because it's smaller than the other one we did, but I didn't wanna rethink all that. This is easy enough, right? This will work. Let me show you what I do with my rubber band. Okay, I told you guys, I'm not big on tying rubber bands. I don't like the feel of that. And a lot of you ask me what would be another alternative for rubber bands because you have a latex allergy. Maybe consider some hair ties that are wrapped with fabric or even um, elastic you can get in the notion section of some like sewing sections and things like that. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is a three inch rubber band. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it in half. This is not quite as bad as tying one of it together. And I'm just gonna tie this in half, okay? So just carefully pulling it and trying to get that knot into the center. And honestly, this is not as bad. If I have to tie the single little piece, I don't like, see, I can't stretch it. I don't like that feeling. So <laughs> I've tied it in half and now I'm gonna cut off the um, side on one side of the knot. It really doesn't matter which size you pick, which side of the knot. And I've created for myself just a smaller rubber band. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna do this. Um, you might have a smaller rubber band, just use that. All right, so I'm gonna take my first little wing section here and I'm going to put my rubber band around it and I'm gonna let that live here, okay? And then I'm gonna turn my knot to the side because I don't want it to be on the outside when I get to the other end. So just have that on the side. And then I'm gonna pick up my other section. I don't really need the wings, I just need this little flap and I'm gonna put this right here. Now here's what needs to happen. That rubber band is gonna live in those two little points that we made. And when you press this guy open, like so, he'll lay down like this for a minute, but when we get, when it's time to glue him all together and let him go, he'll pop back up. All right, again, I'm gonna put my heavy scissors here while I work on the top. Okay, so put those there. I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna add glue. Now this guy's a little poppier because he's small, he's a little tighter. I'm gonna add glue to my little flaps here. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring them over 
and glue them down to the edges. He's much smaller, y'all. <laughs> you gotta work with these little guys like this, okay? All right, so I got that side down. Now I'm gonna do this side. This one's a little easier because I can just put my finger kind of in the middle and put glue on these flaps, just like so, and then bring him down on top. I got a little too much glue here. I'm gonna let it squirt out and clean that off. There we go. All right, and let that kind of all dry up together good. You could use sticky tape if you want, but it'd be hard to deal with that, I think. All right, so then, did you see that pop? You let that little guy pop into place, add a little glue here, okay? And then tuck that little flap underneath. And what I like to do is lay it back flat and get that little flap under there really good. Now, if for some reason you're working with small paper, if for some reason you need to kind of do this number and recrease it or re um, burnish it down, just do. It won't hurt a thing. Get that guy nice and sealed. And look, there's your little pop box. Let's do it again. I always do it wrong. It's this way. Let me put it in my hand and pop it. There we go. So there's your little pop box, okay? So that's what we need to assemble first. I'm gonna make three of these for this project. So now it's time to make what I think is the hardest part of the project. But if you take it slow and do it step by step, it's not too bad, okay? So this is a nine and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock and we need to do some scoring. On the nine and a quarter inch side, I wanna get you to score it at one fourth, one and one half, one and three fourths, three, three and one fourth, then it's a lot of scores, four and a half, four and three fourths, and nine. Now let me tell you why there's so many scores right here. So I wanna cut a rectangle out to put my cubes in to sink into this little slider pocket. So I'm doing it with score marks so I don't have to come back and do it with pencil marks and none of this is gonna show. So I thought this would be the easiest way to do it. So now I'm just gonna turn it onto the five and a half inch side. And now we're gonna score it at one inch, one and one fourth, four, and four and one fourth. And we'll have the measurements in a blog post for you. But you see where all of this crosses over? This piece right here is the one we're gonna use to make our little drop-in box for the um, explosion cubes. I just thought this was the easiest way to do it than trying to measure and cut out a square out of the center of this guy. It'll make sense in a second. So what I'm gonna do really quick is sharpie in what we're gonna be cutting. So this square here is where we're gonna get our cross section cut from. You need these score marks on here. We're gonna use those for folding in a few minutes and you need these fold marks as well, but this is the section you're gonna make a cross mark cut in or an X cut. So let me get a pen blade and here's what you're gonna do. From that corner to that corner, okay, they are the outer side score marks that you did. You wanna make a slice. And remember, when you're using your X-Acto or your um, pin blade or your craft knife, more passes, less pressure. That's what you wanna do. So don't try to cut through the first time. There's no need for that. Just go over it a few times until you get through. You can tell when you're through. I can anyway. Mine, I can feel that knife kind of go through. So there's one, and then I'm gonna come across over here. This is the hardest part of the whole project. This one you have to do. You could probably you know, sink your trimmer blade in if you were real good at that, or you might even um, could do this with a pair of scissors. It's just an X that we're cutting in here just to open this section up. Okay, so we are all open. Close that blade. So now what I want you to do, I'm gonna flip this guy over and you see these two score marks? This outer score mark, I want you to fold that one backwards. That's the largest part of the box. So I'm gonna fold it back and crease it down. And then I'm gonna fold this one on that same outer score mark and crease that down. We're really just opening up this area to be able to let our little cubes sit inside here. And again, none of this will show. It is all gonna hide inside the mechanism. So you won't have to worry about it at all. All right, so now that we've done that, I wanna come back and on this little score mark we had here, you know, the one that was above, I wanna fold that one forward. So I'm just gonna lift like so, and then press that down. This is gonna be what gives us the dimension to hold our cubes. So on all of these guys, fold that next one forward. Just like this. 
This is why I want to do it with score marks because all this work is done for me. I'm not having to come back after the fact and do any pencil marks and figure all these things out. Okay, so we've opened that section up and now we can glue it down, okay? That's all you needed to do right there. Now what we want to do is fold our other score marks. So I'm going to start here on this end and I'm going to fold that one fourth mark and crease that one down. And then you have two here in the middle you need to score. This is going to be what makes the shape of the card, basically. It's going to give you that rectangle. And then you have one at the end. Now, these guys running across the card, you see all those? You don't need them. They were just there to make this part easy, okay? So they're there, but don't worry about them. Now what we want to do is we want to glue these two pieces together. See that? So we're just gonna glue those down. And I think the way I have folded it, this one is a little bit shorter than the other. And it's just cause I'd folded my score line a little different on this one. So I'm gonna tuck it in and let it be the bottom. Again, it won't matter. It's not even gonna show. Now I'm gonna fold the bottom one in cause it feels like it wants to sink in a little better than the top. So I'm just gonna fold that in like so. And you can lay it down and get that to lay flat. And just make sure you get a nice, flat fold there. There we go. Okay, so we got our side closed up just like so. Now what you want to do is you want to take these little flaps that you folded kind of the halfway and you want to put a little glue on the back and you're going to place this down and push it in until you get, let me lift it up and show you, that little wall right there, that little barrier. That's what we're trying to create with this fold, okay? This also, by gluing these down, will stabilize your card, but you just wanna create that little barrier that's gonna hold our explosion cubes in. So you see how it's got the little wall right there? That's what we're looking for. So glue this one down. And you're not looking for perfection, I promise. It's gonna hold them in either way. We just want to make sure we get them glued down so they stay out of our way. Perfect. So you see now we've made kind of this little area to hold our explosion cubes. Let me show you. So I've made three of these little confetti looking ones. Look like this. And then these guys, get that little glue up so I won't glue them down. <laughs> These guys will live right inside here. So when you put your little wrap around it, when the person pulls it, they'll pop out, okay? So you've made that hardest part, you got through it. All right, that's it. Now let's make the little wrap. Okay, so this piece is five and a half by nine and three fourths. And I'm gonna score it on this side because I want this to be my outside. So I'm gonna lay this down like so. And here's your score marks. With the nine and three fourths in your scoreboard, I want you to score it at one half, three-fourths, five and one-eighth, and five and three-eighths. So one, two, three, five and three-eighths. This one's easy. I'm telling you, we've gotten past the hard part. That was that little middle piece. All right, I'm going to fold on all these score lines and crease down and try to get this nice and square. And remember, I did this basically the size of an A2 size card so that you could decorate it easy. So if you were giving this to somebody as like a card, you would know exactly how to decorate the front because you're already a card maker and you know how to do that. So we, I tried to keep it to that same dimension. So I'm just folding these crease lines that we made, or these score lines. There we go. Okay, now what I did on this one, because I wanted it to slide easy, I didn't want to have any of the, anything catching on the side, is I gave you this half inch flap, and that's going to be what you're going to glue this guy together with, is on that half inch flap, not that quarter of an inch side right there. Then you'll just lay this over and line it up, just like so, and that gives you a sleeve. See? Now before we put this on, I want to do a little thumb punch. So I've got this little three fourths in, or three quarter inch punch. So I'm just gonna open the edge and I'm just gonna eyeball about halfway in, about like that to give myself that little thumb punch. And you can do that before you glue it up if you want, but I had enough room to do it because this guy is pretty forgiving. Okay, so now this mechanism slides into here. And what you'll do, I like to have this shorter side 
at the thumb. See, you have a kind of a longer side here. I like the shorter side at the thumb so it pops out faster. But this little sleeve and this little slider are not going to be loose. They're going to be kind of snug, okay? But you want that because you want it to hold your little pieces in so they'll pop when the recipient pulls it out. And now, see, because I didn't close the sides of our little gray piece, they can put their finger in and literally pull this out so easy. Let's go ahead and put our little cubes in and I'll show you how it works. So you just flatten your little cubes out, place them into there. You're gonna slide them inside. And again, you wanted this to be kind of snug because they probably are gonna lift up a little bit. So let me get that tucked in there. And get this guy in just like so, okay? And you can decorate the top any way you want. And then you just do this. Look how cute, huh? Two will probably be even, you know, flatter for you. Like if you don't want it to kind of bulk up in the middle, but I mean, it, that would lay pretty flat, but I think three is cute popping out. So you just put your three in there just like that and slide it inside. Now all we gotta do is decorate the front of this guy. So for the front of this guy, I've cut this panel that'll just fit right here and I'm just gonna decorate it. I love the stripes around the edge. I think they look pretty. Another thing I did, let me show you the stamps that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna be using the one called Birthday Blessings and I took that candle and I just stamped it a bunch of times in a row and that's gonna live kind of down here, kind of low. And then I'm gonna stamp Happy Birthday from that same set at the top. So let me get out my birthday sentiment here. We'll get it stamped at the top here. Just think this will be cute. We'll just stamp. I might put it on an angle. So. Perfect. And then I'm going to do the word happy. Do happy right above it. Like so. Perfect. Okay. I don't think I'm going to pop this up because the card itself is already pretty thick. Now, I did not make an envelope for it. So this will be one that I would hand out, you know, just give in person. So I could have popped this up. It would have been fine. But I'm just going to glue it straight down. And I'm doing one of those no color things. I don't know. I know some of y'all are going to like it and some of y'all are not going to like it, but I'm trying it. I just want to see how it goes. Okay, so I'm going to glue this guy to the top. And I made this little panel so it would just miss my little thumb mark. And you might want to measure that if you want it to look a lot like this. And the reason I say that is, unless you put this exactly like I did, it'll be hard for you to get that measured just exactly like mine. Um, but I just sunk it in about a quarter of an inch, almost a half an inch all the way around. Isn't that cute? Okay, now we need to do one more thing. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be using my one that has the um, marker marks on it for my actual card, but for this one today, I am. The other thing I want us to do is I want us to make a pencil mark because I want us to do one more little bit of stamping on this guy. So, I'm going to close this up, and then I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm just going to trace it um, right along this pencil line just to show me where I can do this next little bit of stamping. So we have a stamp set called Action and it has the word pull and I really should have done it ahead of time and I didn't. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to take this post-it notepad and stick it right inside here so that it gives me a way to stamp on there. Okay, since I thought about it after the fact and I'm going to get the word pull from my stamp set. I'm going to ink that up and right in that section, I'm going to stamp the word pull. This set is so handy. I use that. You can tell which ones I use because of how how dirty they are on my set. But this is my um, action stamp set. You see all the action words? And this one I have on a block. I keep it on a block just for place photo here stuff. But I love this set. So that one's available in our store too. And putting that little post-it note under there helped me be able to do that. All right, let me erase my pencil mark. And let's put this guy back in here. Again, it is a snug fit, so you have to fiddle with it for a second. You don't want it to be loose, okay? And now we can put our cubes in. Now, you may want to spend time decorating your cubes. I just thought the confetti was kind of cute, like the little confetti paper. But you might want to decorate these guys or something like that and put them inside. So I'm going to slide these in. And I'm going to hold them in place as I push it in. So I want that to stay in there. And that becomes your birthday card. And it says pull. You can do so much with this. I can just see now what you guys are always better than me anyway. There's no telling. Okay, so we got these guys in and loaded up. Let's pull it apart and see what it does. There we go. There's our card, our little cubes. And you might want to tell the person when they get it, no, just pull it open fast. Just do it. Because I think the faster they go, the more they'll pop. You know, I think that's super cute. But that is our mini cubes. Now, I will tell you, I think two in here works better than three. Um, just because of the thickness that we created, because two kind of stays in there. The third one kind of slides out. So it's up to you, whatever you decide you want to make. But 
two of them pop out really, really easily, no problem, but you do what feels comfortable for you. Three is super cute to put inside of there. So there you go, guys, the mini cubes. You guys ask for those. You always do. You always want something smaller when I make one thing. So I hope that that has been fun for you to learn today, and good luck with that. I want to see what you're doing with it. Don't forget, head to my website at memememadeit.com and share with us on your customer gallery your pop-up cubes, mini or full size, ever how you're doing them. I think they're adorable, and I'd love to see them. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.